What's going on YouTube? It's your boy OGT Man and today we got Yeet is proving every single hater wrong by Hello Yasmin Extras. Now I haven't heard nothing from Yeet in a minute. Now that, that I'm not saying he he fell off. I just haven't heard him in the mix as much. But maybe Mr. Yasmin got that for us today. New to the channel, make sure you like, comment, subscribe. And um yeah, let's get this video started. You did Wait, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, like I said again. Road to 10K at 2300, I will be doing long, long vlog videos again. Well, not again, but like I'm, they're gonna be longer than the ones that I usually do. Like instead of 10, 15, 17 minutes, maybe like 30, 35, 40, depending on how much footage we get that day. But anyway, let's keep going. You did. Up y'all. He is an artist that we've seen come to rise since 2021. Mm -hmm. He really, really took things off in 2022. And it mm -hmm. felt like, not that he was in a bit of a lull, but that his hype train had stopped. Especially when it came to, I think the album was 2093 that I dropped this year. There wasn't as much hype for it, especially in the subsequent weeks after it dropped. I think the sales were fine and all of that, and the streams were fine. But the most important metric that we all have to look towards is, can he get persons? in real life to show up to the show to enjoy the show and can he put on a show and it seems to be that yeet is not only is he here to stay i just see him continue to grow because i was looking oh, yeah. at these clips this is why i say tour footage clips from someone doing shows on their actual headlining tour is the most important type of content because you actually get to see what's real life if you see a person that you don't think is supposed to sell a lot of tickets and then you see a bunch of people at their shows and they're not opening up for somebody it piques interest it makes you want to check it out you're like oh what am i missing on now i haven't been missing on yeet since i've been paying attention to the guy for at least two years i definitely wasn't up early on him i think i found him too alive around there but i think yeet is not a pioneer but is a standing testament to what i believe we're going to see as a new heavyweight in rap music which is someone that doesn't okay. have real mainstream hits uh, yeah yeet has a couple of songs that have what 100 million streams maybe a little bit over 100 million streams potentially 200 million oh yeah the song with drake of course yeah he has a bunch of songs with several hundred million streams but he doesn't have any songs that are top 10 i don't even know about top 20 they may have peaked at that point not nah, i don't even think they peaked at top 20 so he doesn't have the mainstream broad appeal which is fine yet he's doing more numbers when it comes to actual people in seats than other rappers that do have a hit Most and actually get up there and this is interesting because usually you used to have a hit to be able to sustain like this or people were waiting for your next hit but that's not the case like for example the baby he's had multiple hits smash hits remember the baby's last tour what was it called it was named after his album that he was gonna drop it was something part two tour he was not doing more than 2,500 person venues. This Dang, not more than that. Oh, why we paused on that? But not more than 2,500, the baby? You got Yeet selling out more than you? Don't get me wrong, you're a cool artist. You, you, you fucked yourself over in the past, but you know, you're trying to get back there, but it's just like 25, no, no more than 2,500? God damn, I'm close to 2,500 subscribers. You ain't pulling that many people? By the way, thank y'all for every single thing y'all do for me. Thank y'all for watching my videos day in and day out. I appreciate every single one of y'all. Y'all don't know how much this means to me. Let's hope we can continue to grow in the up and coming years. And yeah, we're back to the video. Do tour. He was not doing more than 2,500 person venues. This was in the U.S. Blame it on Baby 2. Or Baby on Baby 2 tour, I think it was. That didn't do too hot. And keep in mind, baby's a great rapper. The baby has had multiple hits that are way bigger than anything Yeet has. He's had broader mainstream appeal. He has more celebrity. Yet here's Yeet doing 5,000 plus person venues consistently across the nation. Meanwhile, the baby struggled to pull half of that. What does that tell you? That mainstream broad hits are not as important as they once were. And I think these mainstream hit action. Actually, I don't want to hear what you're saying. Come on, let's get back to Yasmin. Hits are 
good for the artist brand maybe for brand deals and things like that but when it comes to having a strong fan base and sustainability i don't see that being the case anymore and sure that we've always had one hit wonders but i'm talking about artists that have also had an album or two and a decent fan base not just a singles based artist like a flow rider or a tiger for instance if tiger went on a solo tour i don't know how it would sell like tiger's got smash hits but how many people are like, oh, it's just Tyga on the bill? I really, really want to go see that. I'm not one of those people. And I'm somebody that actually likes a couple of Tyga's tapes. Suicide Boys, I think, are an example of this too. Although they came a long way earlier, they were niche. But their niche is so strong. These guys are doing crazier numbers than a lot of mainstream acts. They're having multiple songs from their album charting on the Hot 100. Doing crazy numbers with a major distribution deal. But a distribution deal nonetheless. I don't think they sold their masters or did a standard record deal and i like how he decided to move because there was some controversy or well let's not call it controversy there were some arguments and debates going on about yeet's decision to not do festivals he had pulled out of rolling loud when he was first blowing up scorching hot everyone's like yo yeet is the guy why isn't he doing rolling loud and that's usually a good look but he decided to opt for his own tour a couple of months later and I think this was in 2022, where he was doing a couple hundred person venues. And a lot of people were saying, hey, these performances weren't great, but people were going crazy for it. He did, I think it was a 50 city tour for that tour. And then he continued on. I don't know if he went on another tour after that, but that's when he did the songs with Uzi. That's when he continued to blow up. And then now he's doing a significantly bigger tour. I think this may be his third tour. Keep in mind, he's always headlined his tour. He's never opened up for anybody else. The guy's been the main act. And there have been other artists that have come up in the quote-unquote underground that not only do most of them, their music sucks, but they're not able to do this. Why is that? I don't know. It's probably a case-by-case -case basis. You can't just throw a blanket reason on top of all of them. But I'm anticipating seeing this because I think the, the death of the mainstream artist that has a big fan base that is showing up to their shows but is also talked about by everyone all the time and is also played on radio and also has music that appeals to everyone it seems like that is too broad now and there are so many of those artists that have songs that can at least touch the mainstream and hits get recycled or not recycled hits get cycled through significantly quicker because of tiktok but also because of the frequency of the hits that get pushed out on tiktok and it's not tiktok's fault it's just, hey, there's a new hit now and people get used to this little segment, whereas there used to be this period of dis I ain't gonna lie, he's been he's been heavy facts. I'm I'm not disagreeing with that. Nah, none of this. Now these hits getting cycled like he said, getting cycled out. People people wanna hear something new. This, hey man, he he's speaking facts right now. I'm just listening just like y'all. I know I was supposed to be reacting and you know, but he's been he's been no good facts and he is one of them guys. I ain't gonna lie when he when that first song that I heard from him, um what is it, what is it? Sorry about that. When I tell you, when I first heard that song, I was like, Who is this guy? We got stuff we got to tap in with him and you know, I've been I've been up with him up until a, what, a year last year. I ain't hear nothing that much, but you know, he's still been putting in that Free. work. I, you notice how artist interviews right don't really matter anymore? Like, just look at the views on certain artists. Look at Gunna, right? Gunna did an interview with... It was like an interview slash... It was mainly a puff piece on Spotify's Rap Caviar. I don't think that thing's it cracked 100K. C correct me if I'm wrong, but I looked at it. It was out for several days, and it hadn't cracked 100K. And this is Gunna. People want to hear from Gunna. But I think more than anything else, there was this new meta, if you want to call it, where people wanted to see streamers and rappers interact or just rappers interact in general and show their personality as opposed to the standard interview which we haven't seen a standard interview really knock anything out of the park in a very long time the last time i can recall an interview that was a huge moment was drake and bobby althoff but that's because he put on bobby althoff there's a whole story behind that people are wondering where she came from the style of interview was very rare but the artist interview, I don't know if people don't care about the artist anymore, because that is a possibility. Tired of overpaying for... I'm tired of y'all overly talking. Shut up. Let's get to this video. ...ability too. If a new artist just comes, like, for example, like a Tommy Richmond interview, is 
that would do numbers six, seven years ago. Hell, if it was 2015 to 2018, it would go up like crazy because people want to hear from the person that made the song. But nowadays, I don't know if people would even encounter it. That's the first thing. Like all of the people that listen to the song, how would they even know that he did an interview? A lot of them are just in tune with the song, maybe another song that he dropped and that's all they care about. It's difficult for people to start to care about the artist. For example, people that are singles consumers, they're just singles consumers. They enjoy the music. Whereas I feel like many years ago, people would enjoy songs that weren't hits. So people would discover artists before they were hits and they wanted to hear more from them or before they had hits. And they wanted to hear more from them. For example, like SoundCloud era, none of these guys had hits before they did interviews and their interviews crushed it. I wouldn't say the interview is like a dead format, but I would say it's definitely not the most effective in its standard format which is why you see clips that are a little bit funnier or goofier and these artists are sitting like for example like kevin hart sitting with kai sana like that's not an interview but it has the effect and the widespread reach that an interview would have had on like let's say the breakfast club many many years ago that's another angle to look at things which circling back to eat you eat is somebody that doesn't even really do interviews he doesn't need them. He's not doing the mysterious act either. And it's working out well for him. Playboy Cardi is someone who came out a lot earlier. And he didn't really have smash hits. Maybe if you want to call Magnolia that. But he doesn't have mainstream appeal. And his fan base is really, really cultish and strong. So I think we're going to see a wider array of artists that sound very different. Yet have very strong fan bases. But don't necessarily have smash hits. And I think there's this pressure that Yeet may not necessarily feel to keep up with a hit song after a hit song when he was just known for his projects. He would just drop project after project and the hits were somewhat born out of that. Sure, there were some songs that they led with as... So basically, he talking about, you know, the whole genre and just the mainstream and, you know, I'm gonna leave the link in the description below, but anyways, that's the end of the video. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe. Roll to 10K at 2300. I will start live streaming. Well, not live streaming, but um, fudge vlogs. Long, like, vlogs. Horrible comparison with the baby and the guy. Yeah, yeah, we ain't trying to hit that. Someone's calling. Hello, sword man. OG, how may I help you? You said before you do what? I got gotcha. you. Huh, let's see. This is ridiculous. Damn. You just ridiculously. Oh, God. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's the end of the video. He wasn't really talking about much after, you know, five minutes. Thank you, Hello, you asked me for putting this together, you know. But it's your boy, OGT Man, signing out. Giddy.